When it comes to mitochondria and our longevity, I gotta say, I feel like we kind of covered it all. I mean, leak, dysfunction, fission, fusion, recycling, toxicity, and biogenesis. What else is there? Well, turns out we missed something. Let me introduce you to the latest longevity modulating mitochondrial happening you need to know about fragmentation, particularly in our oh so critical for long-term vitality muscle tissue, and more importantly, what you may be able to do about this age-related phenomena. Let's go. Yo, yo, yo. What is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we're talking muscle and mitochondria. That is the tissue type that is responsible for keeping us mobile and able over the course of our life and the energy producing signal organelles that are responsible for complex life, period. So two kind of important things. And we'll be talking how these two things, mainly one leading the other, team up to drive one of the worst cellular and metabolic happenings when it comes to living long and finishing strong. And that is the deterioration of muscle mass and function. A natural happening in which mitochondria seem to be a pretty major player in. And even an early molecular sign of, at least, according to this new research. But we'll talk about that along with what we can do in just a little bit. First, let's start with some interesting facts about this very unique muscle mitochondria relationship because this lays the foundation for what you need to know to understand this fragmentation problem. And it starts with a reminder that this link between mitochondria dysfunction and muscle aging is not a new one. As research to date has established a strong link between the two, and in doing so, also discovering some very unique ways that the mitochondria in muscle operate. One being that there are actually several different subtypes of mitochondria operating within this energy demanding tissue. And if you're a little confused by that, Here's an example. Decades of research has uncovered that not all mitochondria are equal in their behaviors. And in skeletal muscle, there are two main types that I wanna bring your attention to. Starting with subsarcolemma mitochondria, which have been designated the mitochondria closest to the blood-filled capillaries bringing supplies to the cell. Those supplies like the critical oxygen, glucose, and fatty acids that we need to synthesize the energy of life, ATP. So yeah, kind of important. And you may be wondering, what exactly make these mitochondria unique? Well, they seem to be responsible for shuttling energy to the more central mitochondria within the cell, the intermyofibrial mitochondria which, as alluded to, are significantly further from that spigot of resources. And it's this delicate balance which end up facilitating muscle cells to stay functional and efficient. You know, for when you do your morning flex in the mirror. You do do a morning flex, right? Moving on. And thus facilitates you to stay strong and capable. That is, until things start getting dysfunctional. And as you know from all of our previous mitochondria powwows, which will be linked below, dysfunction can be driven by many different means and not just simply getting old. In fact, the opposite is becoming a more convincing argument by the day, as it's highly likely the unnecessary, often toxic stressors from the modern ultra process, ultra sedentary Western lifestyle end up driving the cellular and metabolic dysfunction, which in turn accelerates biological aging, which is a great segue into the dysfunctional star of the show, fragmentation which by definition is the process where mitochondria undergo division into smaller units, specifically by a process called fission. Now, as with many biological phenomena, this process has a lot of nuance, as it's been a documented response associated with energy regulation, 
quality control and adaptation to new metabolic dynamics. But what recent animal research has told us is too much fragmentation can lead to muscle wasting in mice. And obviously, muscle wasting is associated with morbidity, or the opposite of longevity. And in the limited research where this was looked at in humans, to date, it has been observed that fragmentation of muscle mitochondria can begin after only six days of bed rest in healthy volunteers, while functional impairments start to be seen within two months. So although not 100% confirmed in humans, it has a lot of indications of muscles getting wasted. Leaving the open, interesting question, what happens in humans who are not bedridden and just living normal, regular lives? Is this still a relevant biological phenomena to be worried about? And thus, a potential target to delay aging? A perfect time for this new study. Researchers out of the University of Amsterdam sought to understand this very question, exploring this effect in healthy individuals with physical inactivity out of the equation. To do this, they recruited 12 young and 10 middle-aged, slightly overweight volunteers for a muscle mitochondria analysis. And after initial review, they unsurprisingly observed that the younger participants' muscles use more oxygen, and as a byproduct, generated more power than the older participants' muscles. Okay, cool, but Tell me something I don't know. How about this? Interestingly, they observed that this was not linked to blood flow. Instead, it seemed that the younger muscle was more efficient at pulling oxygen from the blood. But this was just the beginning. Next, they moved to the mitochondria themselves, examining tissue biopsies in vitro, finding that the older participants had an increased amount of smaller intermyofibrial mitochondria, along with a greater presence of markers indicating fragmentation. Remember, these are the central located power stations, which begs the question, what was going on with those subsarcolemma mitochondria? Well, they observed that these mitochondria were also smaller, again, indicating more fragmentation suggesting less overall density for the older participants. But again, there's more. Upon a deeper look, the fragmentation in both areas was seen to be associated with a higher accumulation of fat or lipid droplets, a combo which has been previously observed to be associated with metabolic dysfunction. Hmm. You don't say. Lastly, researchers also observed one more super interesting thing when they compared the structures of the mitochondria themselves. Mainly that the cristae or tiny folds inside mitochondria, which play a critical role in proper energy production, aka ATP synthesis, were less regular in the older group with some of those mitochondria not even having cristae in areas at all. I mean, Talk about an energy crisis, right? With these new findings, researchers concluded that fragmentation in the intermyofibular mitochondria and the reduction in the cristae were likely responsible for nearly all of the changes to VO2 max, or the gold standard for aerobic capacity along with a strong assay for muscle mitochondria function, stating their findings reflect an early aging phenotype making the mitochondrial changes observed a strong candidate for interventional studies aimed to slow the progression of aging on physical function. Which brings us to the age-defying question. How can we delay what seems to be this natural fragmentation phenomena? Let's talk about it. And I think a good place to start is by double-clicking on what I just said. One of the natural byproducts of complex life, the life that is facilitated and enabled by mitochondria, is the natural deterioration of the function and ability of those mitochondria over time. That being said, much of the research indicates that we humans can modulate, aka delay or accelerate this by the way we live our life. So if you're like me and you prefer the delay option, here are some top methods 
you should consider. First, consistent daily exercise, ideally a mix of aerobic and strength training. And this is because the data has been clear that daily badonka donking immediately begins to improve your mitochondria situation. How, you ask? Well, the list is quite impressive. First, by stimulating the recycling of weak, leaky ones via a process called mitophagy, while in tandem promoting the creation of new healthy ones via mitochondrial biogenesis. This right here increases the capacity and density of strong, not leaky, mitochondria, and reduces inflammation by eliciting a powerful anti-inflammatory response. Pretty good deal if you ask me. This dynamic even has some studies, albeit ambitious and optimistic ones, suggesting that six months of endurance training can compensate for 30 years of aging. And we already know from reviews like this one, that exercise may literally be the best thing you can do, along with protein consumption, to keep your structural self, aka muscle and bone, young and functional. So the risk reward could potentially be one for the record books when it comes to longevity. Next, and not surprisingly, what you eat matters too. As real whole foods filled with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, polyphenols, healthy fats, fiber, and protein fuel, lubricate, and repair your cellular machinery in ways no prescription can compare to. Promoting the growth and maintenance of healthy cells loaded with healthy mitochondria while reducing inflammation both directly through antioxidant pathways and indirectly by modulating things such as the microbiome and inflammatory visceral fat. And as we saw from reviews like this one, overloading your mitochondria with excess carbohydrates, a commonality of the modern Western ultra-processed diet, the siege of glucose and fructose can damage the integrity of the mitochondrial Christi, setting the stage for dysfunction. So keep your mitochondria in mind next time you're going to grab a snack. On the topic of food, we cannot overlook the powers of strategically not eating as well, as intermittent fasting and time-restricted feeding have also shown mitochondria boosting effects. These benefits mainly come from the stimulation of cellular and mitochondrial cleanup processes such as autophagy and mitophagy, helping rid the dysfunction before it proliferates, significantly reducing inflammation, and boosting mitochondrial plasticity and integrity as well. So yeah, strategic meal timing, which we have a whole playlist on has some mitochondrial pull. Almost as much as the goat of lifestyle habits. High quality circadian aligned sleep. Because not getting it has been shown over and over to be a metabolic disaster. As chronic sleep deprivation negatively alters the mitochondria's bioenergetic capacity. Decreasing respiration efficiency and increasing the expression of genes involved in the response to oxidative stress. Stress. Probably one of the reasons sleep deprivation is associated to so many metabolic diseases. So get on a good schedule, rising and falling with the sun, and prioritizing a consistent eight-hour sleep opportunity each night. And if you do that, your energy-producing organelles will thank you with efficiency. And since oxygen efficiency was such a big part of the study we reviewed today, I can't help but remind you that Nasal breathing is one of the simplest and most effective ways to do just that, regulating so many metabolic processes in a beneficial direction, including by increasing our body's CO2 tolerance, as discussed here, which helps guide oxygen to the tissue and small microcapillaries which need it the most, putting your mitochondria in a position to operate more efficiently because you're getting them the resources they need to do so. Other notable mitochondria massaging modulators include heat and cold exposure, stress management, a big one, limiting exposures to pollutants and toxins in everyday life, and spending more time in nature and grounding yourself. I want you to think about all of these lifestyle interventions we just walked through as ways to actively repair, maintain, and upgrade your mitochondria. And in our biological world where we have trillions of cells with thousands of mitochondria apiece, that's a pretty big deal. 
because efficiency is the name of the game. And that's simply because the longer they're efficient, the longer we can move, think, laugh, dance, and cuddle with our dogs. In other words, get the most out of our pretty cool meat suit for as long as possible without being unnecessarily impaired or driven in a state of morbidity just because we forgot or more realistically didn't know we got to take care of our little cellular power plants within. So now you know. Because come on, we can't let things like mitochondrial fragmentation get in the way of us snuggling with our dogs. So there's only really one thing to do. Grab a kettlebell or something and get swinging. I'm <laughs> sorry.